Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 113 of Photo Critiques. Now I'm sure most of you have heard by now that I'm no longer accepting new images for critique. I do have a lot to do though, so I'll be doing critiques right through February and into March. If you're curious as to why I'm no longer going to be doing critiques, in the description of this video I'll have a link, you can click on that, and in a little blog post I wrote, I'll explain what I'm going to be doing instead of critiques and why I'm not doing critiques anymore. But anyways, like I mentioned, I have enough to keep me busy through February and into March. Now in today's critique, this is episode 113, I'm pleased to critique the wor work of Justin Wentworth. Uh, Justin sent me in some really nice images. This first one, uh, I love the processing, very nice uh, colors, the snow, very well done, very nice processing, um, for, you know, in that regard, very nice. The focus is excellent, very nice focus. The scene itself, the truck is the star of the show. The, tr the truck is interesting, we, you know, you know, it's the main subject. But the rest of the supporting cast is not as interesting. As you can see here, you know, the sky isn't super interesting, the field itself isn't overly compelling. So in a case like this, we go back to where I say work the scene. And since the truck is interesting, I would say you get really close and you do some close-ups of the truck, of this headlight falling out. Um, you know, you could still get the whole truck in, just make it more dominant in the picture. Uh, you know, and shoot, shoot it from different angles. It looks like the sun is rather low coming from this direction, judging by this long shadow over here. So maybe there's something you could do on the other side where you could silhouette the tr truck. Um, so, you know, work the scene is what I would suggest on this one. Also, be conscious of sensor spots. There's a spot right there. There's a spot there, spot there, little one there. So you, you really got to go through and get rid of those sensor spots. Uh, if you use Lightroom, it's easy enough to do in Lightroom. Of course, Photoshop is, is even faster. This shot here, um, you know, Birdhouse Fireworks. Um, I'm not really sure exactly... You know, if you were had fireworks up here and they were just going off, or something was, sh you know, shot up into the birdhouse. Either way, I think your um, 13 seconds is a little too long because we have this big hot spot right here. And um, I think if you used a, a shorter shutter speed, you know, a second, and you would have had more action uh, instead of this big hot spot here. It is nice here, but even these are starting to get blown out, as you can see these little, uh, like spark enders coming off of here. So um, I think a shorter sh shutter speed in this case and you would have um, you know had a, a you know a more effective picture. This is a very nice shot. I was looking at this earlier. The focus is excellent. He did a really nice job. The lighting's a little unusual. We have the lighting up here at the top and it's more dark down here but that's okay. You know, it's your style. Uh, background's blurred out, so it's it looks like it's a really busy background, but you did a nice job of blurring it out. So it's a really nice shot. This shot of a pony, this is kind of a typical shot we do of horses and ponies where we get the eye. And you did a real nice job. I like the, uh, the wisps of uh, hair coming down from the mane of the pony across his eye or her eye. Um, very well done. The only little thing I could say is... Typically, as I mentioned many times, we like the eye to be in focus. And it looks like your camera grabbed focus right in front of the eye. So right around here is in real tight focus. Now, the eye, as you look at it, is a little blurry. And we really want this eye more in focus, even though it's really obscured by the fur or the hair or the mane. So what we want to do, I think, is use a smaller shutter speed. Or, I'm sorry, smaller aperture, which of course would mean a slower shutter speed. So um, f of 4, I would let's say f of 8, and it would have gave you enough depth of field where you would have had this in focus and the eye in focus too. And you probably would have had the, some of these wispy uh, hairs in better focus also. And I think it would have been a stronger shot if the eye was just a little in uh, tighter focus. But uh, the uh, composition itself I like. I like what you did here. Very nice. I, I like your idea here. This kind of, I consider this an art shot. Uh, you know, pretty cool. Uh, this part over here, you know, it's kind of, just kind of gives you place. Like this is a a bridge pillar or something, you know, uh, 
in you know it's in a park maybe or something but anyways it kind of gives you a place but it's kind of a little bit distracting maybe I, I'd like to see you work this scene and do something more with just the hand and try to minimize all this over here because it's not really needed in the picture this here a uh, couple things the um, got a lot of different elements here we have the old old car we have people we have this um, old water tower and we have this kind of general store or something that looks kind of like an old barn um, so we have a lot of little different elements but nothing really dominant I guess maybe the car a little bit uh, the the crop is real tight um, I think this scene again if you could work it it's a busy scene I'm not sure if there's really a better picture you might have took the best picture possible in this scene so I'm not sure but I'd like to see a wider uh, view of the shot so if you were backed up and you had um, you know shot it horizontally and you got this entire building or more of the building in the shot I think it would have been a stronger shot but again I'm not a hundred percent sure because I wasn't there so it's hard to say but shooting vertically like this and cutting off part of the car and the building and just barely getting in the water tower and cutting off people over here I doesn't do the shot any justice this shot here to uh, the car you know I, the sky is fantastic nice kind of a sunset and a silhouette but you have so much of this foreground here and it's really kind of dead space and it doesn't really qualify as negative space it's just kind of dead space so even here I think even if I opened up on the um, shadows and brought out more of the car I still don't think it's gonna help the image too much see you know what I mean so this is another one where I think you wanted to kind of you know get a silhouette of the car against the sky but um, it just with all this in front here I think it just didn't make uh, didn't make this didn't help the shot at all having all this uh, grass in front so again maybe if you shot horizontally we're a little closer um, and angled it shot low angled it up so you could get the sky and then you could silhouette the car if that's what you were going for so again it comes back to working the scene be impatient trying different angles different focal lengths I think a really a much closer towards the front of the car with a wide angle lens I think would have been a better shot or a better way to get the composition which is what I think you were going for is this car silhouetted against the sky shooting horizontally too you would cut out a lot of this part up here of the sky which isn't really adding to the shot is a you know still life uh, kind of a macro very you know very interesting I think you did a nice job focus is excellent um, really it's a nice shot on this shot too I should add is if you ever wanted to draw the user's attention more towards the middle is um, you know don't be afraid to add a vignette a lot of us photographers put vignettes on things and well it does it helps this now stand out better from the background so there's the before it's just a subtle thing and there's the after you can see it it's almost like having a spotlight on your subject and you still see the leaves here it's just they're not as dominant in the shot before after or the other way around there's before after yeah okay you guys know what I mean I'm still on cough syrup give me a break uh, this shot here I love the sky it's pretty cool I like the effect you were going for I love how it's all bright down here and it goes up um, one thing the horizon is crooked we really got to straighten the horizon that's like um, really important in photography landscape photography keep the horizon straight that is like the biggest mistake of especially everyone has you know phones iPhones and smartphones taking shots I see so many phone shots and the horizons are so crooked it drives me insane and I'm a little more sensitive to it I mentioned it in previous um, critiques and my other videos I do a long time ago I was a stock photographer and that was the day when we shot slide film and I used to mail the film in to the um, to my agent you know to get the sales and he would send some back and sometimes he'd had curt little notes on it a reshoot straighten horizon reshoot straighten horizon so 
I, um, from my early days of photography, I got so many images rejected because I had a crooked horizon. I'm real um, sensitive to the fact that I always make sure my horizons are straight. If you can't do it or you, you just didn't get it in camera, you could do it in post. It's easy enough. You could just go in here and you could go to lens corrections. You just click on a couple of these guys. You could even hit auto and it usually will correct it. It might have overcorrected it in this case, but you still could fix it um, from there. But I won't go into it right now because this isn't really a Lightroom training video. It's a critique video. So uh, straighten your horizon. I think that is the main thing on this shot. The other thing, it's a little odd. Everything is so far away. It looks like it's a wide angle lens, 50 millimeter, but the sun here is very large. I don't know if you added that later or if that is something added later. Um, it just looks um, awkwardly big. Now, if that's what you were going for from an artistic view, um, you know, go for it. That's your vision. If you added this and it's you know that big and you wanted to sell this to magazines or something um, a astute photo editor wouldn't want it if it if he and you know someone more astute than me because I actually can't tell uh, if this if you added this with the radio filter or something in Lightroom it, you might want to just make it a little smaller so it matches the surroundings a little better um, it is possible I understand I don't know where you were when you took this different parts of the globe when you take pictures the sun will appear bigger than it will in other parts of the globe I understand that so it is possible I'm used to seeing the sun at my latitude and longitude where I live constantly and I know a 50 millimeter lens uh, that sun will never be that big um, so um, obviously like I mentioned wherever you are maybe it is but um, <coughs> Again, if you added it in post, you might want to consider bringing that, making it a little bit smaller. And that's it, I think. Thank you very much, Justin, for sharing your work with us. I really do appreciate it. Definitely have a, a great photographic eye, and I uh, look forward to seeing more of your work in the future. I um, like to thank everyone who watches all my videos and puts up with my um, sore throat and little coughs I, I sneak in here and there. I appreciate it. I appreciate your patience and your understanding. Um, if you guys have time, go over to my website, anthonymorganti.com. I have all kinds of videos and articles over there on photography. And if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.